good afternoon ladies and gentlemen my name is osama manzar i am a founder director of digital empowerment foundation uh, welcome to the workshop number 7 in room number 1 uh, low cost sustainability access uh, uh, i would like to introduce this workshop to all of you because the way this workshop is uh, planned and organized is uh, basically that we need to work uh, and workshop is mostly to work rather than make a panel discussion and where three four people just speak and listen uh, rest of the people listen so all of you are going to be part of this workshop everybody will have something to contribute everybody will have something to say and all of it will be um, uh, on record um, we thought a lot about it and uh, when the topic was sanctioned to us by igf that this is the workshop that we will have to organize we started thinking that how we can make it effective and because it's a very serious topic as far as the south asian countries are concerned um, low cost uh, sustainability access is 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 an important issue and this issue is also important from all aspects from the regulations point of view from the content point of view from the device point of view and also from the business point of view uh so so we thought that we should also make a white paper so we distributed the white paper to many of the speakers or the panelists who confirmed earlier uh, uh the logistically the way it is going to work here is that um, we will invite uh, special secretary dit mr chandrashekar here who will deliver the keynote address and the rest of the people we will divide into four parts based on four topics uh, if you look at the time table that you have in your hand it is divided into four parts that doesn't mean all of them are going to speak here from the uh, dais but you can choose your own topic where your interest is apart from the names which is written under various topics many names which is not there i mean and many of you who were here uh, lately joined us can also be part of it so uh, having said that um, uh, i would uh, immediately go ahead without losing any time and request mr chandrashekar to join me here and uh, deliver the keynote address and guide us to the rest of the uh, session that this uh, workshop i think holds special importance next of developing countries in general and in particular uh, the subcontinent here as we join the rest of the world in the drive to take internet to people who have not had the benefit or the access so far while 22% of people in the world have access to the internet in india and in the subcontinent on the whole it's of the order of just 5% which means which shows that we have a long way to go and clearly when we have been talking about reaching some of the benefits of uh, internet to uh, the last billion or even for that matter to the next billion uh low cost uh, and sustainable access is clearly a key element in actually realizing that dream we have to uh, take into account the fact that an explosive growth of internet access in fact over the last 8 years it's well in excess of 1000% in the subcontinent and in china so this is a very large segment of uh, the uh, globe today 
So obviously this kind of growth would not have happened unless the internet is a doing something and has some significance and has some utility for the people in this area. But when we talk about low cost sustainable access and going forward to the next billion and the next till we reach the last billion, then we need to be very clear about what all these terms mean, uh, what low cost really means. Because low cost, you know, in a certain part of the world, a dollar or two can be really a low cost. But in uh, the developing countries and in this part of the world, a dollar or two can actually be the wage that the person earns in the whole day. And if you look at the cost of the services which are actually availed of, there are many elements which go into that cost. It's not, not only the cost of the IT equipment, not only the cost of different kinds of devices, the connectivity, the people involved at different levels, uh, all of these together uh, contribute to the cost. So when we talk about low cost, it is the summation of all of these costs which need to be uh, in whatever way optimized or brought down to the minimum. We've seen spectacular impacts of what lowering of costs to affordable and meaningful levels can, can do. Uh, when you witness the mobile telephony explosion in India, where today it's crossed 300 million and uh, adding 10 million every month, something which no other country in the world, including China, has uh, been able to do. We've also seen access points. In fact, an effort is being made to aggregate the demand from, from government, from the private sector, from all the developmental uh, agencies uh, to be able to make uh, such infrastructure uh, affordable and sustainable. The other important element is shared access. While in the developed world, the common or uh, the default uh, option is for people to uh, access the net themselves, uh, here quite often, uh, either the infrastructure is shared or even the person providing the uh, access is a resource which is available to the whole community. And uh, the, the idea therefore is to maximize the number of users to make uh, such access affordable within a rural uh, economy. A high num uh, range and number of services and a high volume in terms of the number of people coming to access the services is therefore uh, critical. And the question again is, how do we do this? Uh, I mentioned about some of the innovation uh, in the uh, mobile telephony, in the pricing. But if you look at the internet-based services, then a huge amount of innovation in creating services, a huge amount of entrepreneurship in reaching the services to people, and also in creating more uh, value addition to these services. Uh, is uh, extremely uh, critical. India, for example, is a service-based uh, country and we are accustomed to all kinds of services and are now reaching the doorstep. So in all of these services, there are such opportunities which uh, make economic sense both to the person providing the service as well as to the person receiving the service. If you come to the question of access, uh, now, access uh, is not just a question of the equipment. There are in developing country environments fairly uh, high barriers to access, fairly rigid and uh, uh, extremely difficult uh, barriers to such access. If you look at just connectivity, even in a country uh, like India, which is witnessing such a huge revolution in uh, the mobile telephony, I've already mentioned that about 300 million plus people have access today to mobile telephony. But still, if you look at the rural areas, the picture is quite bleak even today. The emerging paradigm is that uh, use of wireless for the last mile is helping countries, especially developing countries, to leapfrog. And what are called disruptive technologies in many uh, countries uh, are actually helping us to leapfrog. And they're not really disruptive in this context because there's nothing there to disrupt. Equally importantly, it also uh, offers an opportunity to achieve such connectivity for a large number of people very quickly. So the timelines associated with such connectivity are extremely small. So 
there is a problem and there is an opportunity when it comes to access and how to uh, make best use of this is a question. Power is another uh, factor which is normally taken as a given, but in developing countries this can itself be a big challenge. And today uh, availability of power is a problem, the quality of power is a problem. So there are many, many such uh, difficulties and unless you believe that uh, solving the power problem of the country is a part of the uh, effort to provide internet access, uh, which I think is, is not realistic because that is an even bigger uh, problem. And if we lock ourselves into a solution to that problem, then perhaps we will uh, not be able to uh, achieve whatever is possible. So one has to find some workarounds to those uh, hurdles. And the uh, advent of uh, a lot of low power consumption devices, different kinds of innovations on handheld devices, uh, the emergence of chips which consume very, very low uh, quantity of power. Uh, all of this gives us some hope that maybe there would be uh, some solutions emerging there in terms of costs, in terms of power usage, in terms of the uh, ability to work without power for at least some uh, reasonable duration. Other possibilities which have been seen in, uh, the, in our context is the emergence of solar power for uh, use of such devices in uh, remote and far-flung uh, areas. If these challenges of connectivity and power are not daunting enough, there are uh, even more uh, issues of language, for example. Again, uh, it's a known fact that English and a few other languages account for a bulk of what's on the, on the internet. But in countries like India, where you have uh, 22 official languages and a host of other uh, languages as well, the meaning and utility of the internet uh, does get diminished by uh, this problem. So what are the ways that one can get around that? And uh, are there any uh, short-term remedies which can help us to overcome this? These are, again, some questions. Literacy, both of the IT kind and the normal three Rs, is another aspect. How do people who are not IT literate, or not even literate for that matter, get access to the net? Again, what kind of uh, you know uh, workarounds can be thought of if we are not to wait not to wait for generations to uh, solve these uh, problems? When we are talking about a billion or a billion plus uh, people, then scale is has to be taken as a given. Now the question is which models are scalable and which models are not and how quickly and how fast can we scale up. If you look at uh, a lot of the models uh, championed by uh, on donor based uh, efforts, uh, many of them have done extraordinarily good work uh, and many of them also passionately believe that uh, there has to be at the heart a philanthropic uh, approach in order to uh, provide the kind of societal uh, context that is required in order to mesh with the needs of that uh, society. But uh, there are uh, serious uh, issues of scalability in such models. And conversely, while government can provide scale, the rigidity of the approach does create its own uh, problems. So this is again another uh, set of uh, issues which need to be addressed in the context of access. On, on the regulatory side, uh, for example, uh, in the, in the, again in the Indian context, uh, it is being seen that uh, the internet and internet-based services offer a huge uh, opportunity for doing things for financial inclusion, which as we know is a, is a very important part of giving everybody an equal opportunity for their own economic development. Uh, there are opportunities for financial inclusion, for micro-insurance, for microfinance in the rural areas, provided the internet and the financial sectors come together. But there are uh, some regulatory issues, and while we are seeing uh, different kinds of mobile-based payments and uh, different options for micropayments coming in, uh, unless certain regulatory issues are uh, addressed, uh, these would remain to some extent uh, isolated. There are examples of outstanding uh, content and outstanding uh, facilities which are available, but 
these are not ordinarily being made available through the internet uh, because of uh, the uh, lack of a mechanism by which the content providers or the service providers can actually gain or derive the value of the services and the content which they uh, provide. Uh, for example, there are absolutely uh, world class uh, educational material which is available in India and it is also provided to a lot of other countries. But to uh, make that uh, available on a much wider scale, it has to be made available through the internet and that is not going to happen unless some of these issues of uh, IPR and so on are also uh, adequately uh, addressed. I would like to take a few minutes just to uh, share with you the Indian experience on setting up a large n uh, network of uh, broadband internet enabled uh, uh, centers, uh, what's called the common services centers, which was set up as a government uh, sponsored public private partnership in which government, developmental and private sector demand is being aggregated at the point of delivery. The model is a public private par partnership model with revenue support being provided by the government and based on entrepreneurs in all, almost all the cases, nearly every one of the cases, the people who are running these centers are village level entrepreneurs uh, who are uh, right there in the uh, village. And it, the revenue is backstopped by the government in the form of a guarantee uh, to make up for any viability gap. Uh, so this is uh, the approach. The other important aspect is that the access is uh, through a village level uh, entrepreneur. So it's assisted access, not, not really an individual going on to the net through a shared resource. Even the person providing the service at the village level is uh, part of this uh, setup. And that helps to uh, overcome some of the problems of uh, literacy and illiteracy as well as the language uh, problem in many cases. Uh, now the fact of the matter is that while internet access and in services through the internet is a very important part of this whole game, it's the mobile telephony revolution which has uh, really uh, left the even the internet uh, coverage far behind. So some kind of a tandem between these two where the individual uh, access or the individual uh, connectivity is provided through the mobile and slightly more complex services are provided through these internet uh, centers is what seems to be emerging as uh, the preferred uh, manner of providing low cost services to the whole uh, uh, population. We are also uh, now uh, witnessing the uh, emergence on the market of uh, low cost devices of the range of 5,000 to 10,000 rupees or 100 to 200 dollars which provide both mobile services as well as internet access. And once again, these seem to be set to revolutionize, especially with the advent of 3G, the whole manner in which these services are provided and also the whole paradigm of sustainability and uh, low, uh, low cost. Uh, finally, in the connectivity issue itself, uh, there are a lot of uh, issues which come up when the telecom service providers try to penetrate the rural areas uh, because of the uh, kind of population densities, population spread and economic levels. And quite often this leads to a chicken and egg problem, whether the content and services will come first or the connectivity will come first. And once again, this, uh, through this uh, kind of a large mass program, the government has tried to break the chicken and egg problem by uh, backstopping uh, revenue, providing revenue support and ensuring equitable spread of uh, the access and the connectivity. Uh, having said all that, there are still big issues of uh, capacities, uh, people who understand the imperatives of this uh, medium, what it takes to really make an end to end service available, uh, how to innovate, how to add value, all of these are, uh, are issues uh, both for those who provide the services at the back and those who convey them and those who are actually uh, front ending these services. Uh, again, this is perhaps an area where a lot of thought is required 
on how such uh, issues need to be addressed for the scale that we are talking about. Uh, India offers itself, uh, itself is a crucible for a lot of such experimentation as today we already have about 25,000 of these 100,000 centers on the ground and somewhere by the middle of 2009 we expect all of the 100,000 to be available. So there is an immediate application for thoughts and views and ideas coming out of this uh, uh, deliberations. I'd like to now uh, conclude by just mentioning that uh, internet provides a great opportunity for developing countries to address on the four different join the first uh, uh, circle here uh, and those whose name are not there in the list can
business. of time under the framework of low cost access. So while we are policy and regulation, we don't have to discuss. We have to discuss of South Asia from the perspective of how what kind of policy should be in place. And all these uh, topics are going to come out we are going to present here at the end of it. It's also going to go to IG Patriot of Very much all the best. We meet again in half an hour and we all are here.